Good morning. Okay, the Big Bang Theory, right? So in the Big Bang Theory, all of the universe, all the cosmos, started roughly 13.7 billion years ago. And it started with a little dinky pinprick, right? The, the, the primary theory has this little pinprick. And out of this little pinprick, there is an explosion that sends hurtling into the cosmos all that is. Today, in the Feast of the Pentecost, we celebrate that little pinprick. And that little pinprick is a place called the Upper Room. You remember the story, right? So that uh, at the end, uh, Jesus comes out of Jerusalem, down into the Kidron Valley, and he goes up on the Mount of Olives, and at the top of the Mount of Olives is a town called Bethany, where Martha and Mary and Lazarus are from, and he says to them, I want you to go back to Jerusalem, and I want you to wait for the power from on high. And as he is speaking these words, he ascends into heaven, and his, his materiality, his physicality, becomes spirituality, right? And then his followers come back down through the Kidron Valley, back up, and they go into the upper room. That's where, the, that's, that's where they're staying. And the upper room is in St. Mark's mother's house. Okay, so these houses, the, ma the maximum number of floors is two. And this is the second floor. And St. Mark, our patron saint for this parish, is a young man. He lives with his mother. He's got his friends at his house. And we, uh, several of us who were on the last Holy Land pilgrimage, went to the upper room. If you'd like to go to the upper room nowadays, you have to go down, right? Everything that of Jesus' day in Jerusalem is 20 to 30 feet underground because Jerusalem just keeps getting knocked down and built up, knocked down and built up. So you go actually down into the upper room. And when we were gathered there, uh, Linda Andros, who's seated here today, uh, who knows the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, Jesus' native tongue, she prayed the Lord's Prayer in Jesus' native tongue. And all of us gathered in the darkness of the upper room were lit on fire by the Spirit so that we knew the Spirit to be so present that all the hairs, uh, those little hairs in our bodies all stood on end and we didn't dare move as she prayed it as the Spirit flowed through her. Now that little room uh, in, currently in the old city in Jerusalem, that's the pin prick, okay? And out of that room comes the hurtle uh, uh, through the cosmos and through the universe and through the world. And we get a look at that hurtling by the story uh, that Jan just tried to read, right? And, and you may remember they are gathered in the upper room and while they are gathered in anticipatory prayer, they are praying in anticipation and expectation, it says that a sound like the wind, it doesn't say the wind, a sound like the wind comes through the open window. And while they are seated in prayer, and it's likely that they're seated on a bench that goes around the room, they experience fire. They experience spiritual fire. And that the fire that comes in the room, you know, a tongue of flame, uh, we can see that that tongue of flame divides and it uh, alights, alights, you get the alliteration on that, or the mean that, alights on the heads of the friends of Jesus gathered around. And as the spirit divides in a light, they, <laughs> the big bang, right? The big bang, the sound explodes and they begin to speak in what we might call ecstatic speech, and the room cannot hold them. And it's too much energy in the room, 
and they spill out into the streets. And remember, these are these are narrow these are narrow streets. This is not there's no wide byways in the in the city of Jerusalem. These are little streets, and they come pouring out into the street, and they are speaking in a way that those who are gathered can hear it in their own language. Now, it is the Pentecost, right? Let's just take a moment here. So in the Pentecost, remember Jesus on Easter resurrected. We say that Jesus was appearing to his disciples for 40 days. Remember that 40 days means a long time in the Bible, right? His ascension. And so 10 days later, we're at the 50th day, Penta, the 50th day, it is a Jewish festival of harvest, the harvest of the weeks, which started seven weeks earlier. And so now they are harvesting the wheat and they are having a thanksgiving of sorts. They spill out into the street and they are speaking in these tongues and some people say they're drunk, which I love that part. I love that part. If you ever want to like say, could this be real? Take a look at the little bits and pieces in the Bible and you get little things like, they said they were drunk, right? I mean, who would write such a thing? And Peter prepares the first sermon, and he begins the first sermon with, no, they're not drunk, which I love that. It's a great way to begin a sermon. <laughs> now, is this a miracle of speech, or is it a miracle of hearing? Because this is a Jewish story, right? And the, the Jews have come from diaspora. Diaspora means that they have, they have gone... They are dissipated away from the holy city of Jerusalem to all of these places where they live. And now they have all come home, but they all speak different native tongues in the different lands. And so gathered as they are for the Pentecost, they can now hear the word delivered to them in their native tongue. That's the, that's the, that's the Pentecostal miracle. They hear it in their native tongue. And as part of their native tongue, they move into a mass conversion on this first day, this birthday of the church. And it says a little bit later in the Acts of the Apostles that at the ascension, Jesus tells them, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and to the ends of the earth. And not only to the ends of the earth, but all the way to New Canaan, right? Sometimes we in Western Christianity think that we wrote all this stuff, right? We are the inheritors we, uh, Christianity is an Eastern religion. We sometimes think of Hinduism or Buddhism as an Eastern religion. We are an Eastern religion. It came from the Middle East, right? We inherited this and translated into our ways of thinking, but its birth is a long way away in a very, very different tongue. Now, we come together on this Pentecost to celebrate the coming of the Spirit, to baptize some really cool kids, to bring them into the body of Christ. But if we were at a Pentecostal church today, everybody would be saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. Right? Holding up their hand saying, Amen, to the things I'm talking about. We, as part of the different denominations of the world, all have different spiritual gifts. And I hope you all got up at 7 o'clock yesterday morning to watch the procession. I was so fired up, it was unbelievable. And you got to hear our full of the spirit presiding bishop, the right Reverend Michael Curry, preach in the power of the spirit, right? This is a man who the flame of the fire burns so alive in this man that it's, it's, it's an incredible thing just to be in his presence. He is, literally has a charism from God. But what I'm really concerned about is you. I'm not worried about Michael Curry. I want you to take a look as I'm talking and think about yourself here for a minute. The Holy Spirit, which sent the cosmos hurtling with a new energy, is there and it is here. And it's going to be in the water here in a little bit. And it's going to be in the palm of your hand when you reach out for your communion. And it's here gathered as we are with the body of Christ. But again, I'm concerned about you, right? Take a look at yourself. We know 
from the spiritual vitality initiative that we just did in our parish that there is a great hunger for a spiritual experience amongst the people of the parish. That you have this hunger. And so this is what I want you to come away with. I want you to be like the people in the upper room and I want you to wait in a type of prayer that has anticipation and expectation mixed together. In other words, I want you to go into your prayer life assuming that the power from on high is going to come to you. Not to all of us, but to you. Okay? You. And that like all those in the upper room, you're going to do your part. In other words, the people in the upper room were not sitting around smoking cigarettes, hanging out, having coffee and chatting, right? They were in prayerful expectation for the movement of this spirit. So on this Pentecost day, as we move into the season of that spirit, set your heart open with anticipation and ask the Lord to come to you. Do not mince words. Say you want this experience. You want this spirit. And do not stop saying it until it comes. And when it comes, give me a call and say, it's here.